Spinal adjustments provided by Dr. Chad Rolfson. The Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center is a Des Moines area low flat fee per month unlimited chiropractic care practice. When life happens, just adjust. Schedule today at SpinalTuning.com. Welcome to Storytime, the Gold Children. There once was a poor man and a poor woman who had nothing but a little cottage. They earned their bread by fishing and always lived hand to mouth. But it came to pass one day, when the man was sitting by the waterside and casting his net, that he drew out a fish entirely of gold. As he was looking at the fish, full of astonishment, it began to speak and said, Hark you, fisherman, if you will throw me back again into the water, I will change your little hut into a splendid castle. Then the fisherman answered, Of what use is a castle to me if I have nothing to eat? The goldfish continued, that shall be taken care of. There will be a cupboard in the castle in which, when you open it, shall be dishes of the most delicate meats, and many of them as you desire. If that be true, said the man, then I can well do a favor. Yes, said the fish. There is, however, the condition that you shall tell no one in the world whosoever he may be, whence your good luck has come, if you speak but one single word, all will be over. Then the man threw the wonderful fish back into the water and went home, where his hovel had formerly stood, now stood a great castle. He opened his wide eyes, entered, and saw his wife dressed in beautiful clothes, sitting in a splendid room. She was quite delighted and said, Husband, how has all this come to pass? It suits me very well. Yes, said the man, it suits me too. But I am frightfully hungry. Just give me something to eat. Said the wife, but I have got nothing and do not know where to find anything in this new house. There is no need of you knowing, said the man, for I see yonder a great cupboard. Just unlock it. When she opened it, lo, there stood cakes, meat, fruit, wine. Then the woman cried joyfully. What more can you want, my dear? They sat down and ate and drank together. When they had enough, the woman said, But husband, whence came all these riches? Alas, answered he, Do not question me about it, for I dare not tell you anything. If I disclose it to anyone, then all our good fortune will fly. Very good, she said. If I am not to know anything, then I do not want to know anything. However, she was not in earnest. She never rested day or night, and she goaded her husband until his impatience. He revealed that all was owing to a wonderful gold fish which he had caught and which he returned and had given its liberty. As soon as the secret was out, the splendid castle with the cupboard immediately disappeared. They were once more in the old fisherman's hut, and the man was obligated to follow his former trade and fish. But fortune would so have it that he once more drew out the gold fish. Listen, said the fish, if you throw me back into the water, I will once more give you the castle with a cupboard full of roast and boiled meats. Only be firm for your life's sake. Do not reveal from whom you have it or you will lose it again. I will take good care, answered the fisherman and threw the fish back of the water. Now at home, everything was once more in its former magnificence. The wife was overjoyed at their good fortune, but curiosity, curiosity left her no peace. So they, that after a couple days, she began to ask how it had come to pass and how he had managed to secure it. The man kept silent for a short time, but at last she made him so angry that he broke out and betrayed the secret. In an instant, the castle disappeared and they went back into their old hut. Now you have got what you want, said he, and we can gnaw at a bare bone again. Ah, said the woman, I had rather have no riches if I am not to know from whom they come. Then I have no peace. The man went back to fish, and after a while he chanced to draw out the gold fish for a third time. Listen, said the fish, I see very well that I am fated to fall into your hands. Take me home, cut me into six pieces. Give your wife two of them to eat, 
two to your horse and bury two of them into the ground. Then they will bring you a blessing. The fisherman took the fish home with him and did as it had bidden him. It came to pass that from the two pieces that were buried in the ground, two golden lilies sprang up. That the horse had two golden fowls and the fisherman's wife bore two children who were made entirely of gold. The children grew up, became tall and handsome, and the lilies and the horses grew likewise. Then the lad said, Father, we want to mount our golden steeds and travel out into the world. But he answered sorrowfully, How shall I bear it? If you go away, and I know not how it fares with you. Then they said, The two golden lilies remain here. By them you may see how it is with us. If they are fresh, then we are healthy. If they are withered, we are ill. If they perish, then we are dead. So they rode forth and came to an inn in which were many people. They perceived the gold children and began to laugh and jeer. When one of them heard the mocking, he felt ashamed and would not go out of the world, but turned back home again to his father. But the other rode forward and reached a great forest. As he was about to enter it, the people said, It is not safe to ride through. The wood is full of robbers. Who would treat you badly? You will fare ill when they see that you are all of gold and your horse likewise. They will assuredly kill you. But he would not allow himself to be frightened and said, I must and will ride through it. Then he took bearskins and covered himself and his horse with them so that the gold was not seen and rode fiercely into the forest. When he had ridden onward a little, he heard a rustling in the bushes and heard voices speaking together. From one side came cries of, There is one. But from the other side, Let him go. Tis an idle fellow, as poor and bare as a church mouse. We should wait for more gain. Because what should we gain from him? So the gold child rode joyfully through the forest. No evil befell him. One day he entered a village wherein he saw a maiden who was so beautiful that he did not believe that any more beautiful than she existed in the world. And as such a mighty love took possession of him, he went up to her and said, I love you with my whole heart. Will you be my wife? He too pleased the maiden so much that she agreed and said, Yes, I will be your wife and be true to you for your whole long life. They were married. Then, just as they were in the greatest happiness, home came the father of the bride. When he saw that his daughter's wedding was being celebrated, he was astonished and said, Where is the bridegroom? They showed him the gold child who, however, still wore his bearskins. Then the father said wrathfully, A vagabond shall never have my daughter, and was about to kill him. Then the bride begged as hard as she could and said, He is my husband, and I love him with all my heart, until at least he allowed himself to be appeased. Nevertheless, the idea never left his thoughts, so that the next morning he rose early, wishing to see whether his daughter's husband was a common, ragged beggar. But when he peeped in, he saw a magnificent golden man in the bed and the cast off bear skins lying on the ground. Then he went back and thought, what a good thing it was that I restrained my anger. I should have committed a great crime. But the gold child dreamed that he rode out of the chase and a splendid stag. And he awoke in the morning and said to his wife, I must go out hunting. She was uneasy and begged him to stay there and said, You might easily meet with a great misfortune. But he answered, I must and will go. Thereupon he got up and rode forth into the forest. It was not long before a fine stag crossed his path exactly according to his dream. He aimed and was about to shoot it when the stag ran away. 
He gave chase over hedges and ditches for the whole day without feeling tired. In the evening, the stag vanished from his sight. And when the gold child looked around, he was standing before a little house wherein was a witch. He knocked, and the little old woman came out and asked, What are you doing so late in the midst of a great forest? Have you not seen a stag? Yes, answered she. I know the stag well. And thereupon a little dog, which had come out of the house with her, barked at the man violently. Will you be silent, you odious toad, said he, or I'll shoot you dead. Then the witch cried out in passion, What? Will you slay my little dog? And immediately she transformed him so that he lay like a stone. Meanwhile, his bride awaited him in vain and thought that which I was so greatly dreaded, which lay so heavily on my heart, has come upon him. But at home, the other brother was standing by the gold lilies when one of them suddenly drooped. Alas, said he, my brother has met with some great misfortune. I must away to see if I can possibly rescue him. Then he mounted his golden horse and rode forth and entered the great forest where his brother lay turned to stone. The old witch came out of her house and called him, wishing to entrap him also. He did not go near her, but said, I will shoot you if you do not bring my brother back to life again. She touched the stone, though very unwillingly, with her forefinger. Then he was immediately restored to his human shape. The two gold children rejoiced. When they saw each other again, they kissed and caressed each other and rode away together out of the forest to the one home to his bride and the other to his father. The father then said, I knew well that you had rescued your brother for the golden lily suddenly rose up and blossomed out again. Then they lived happily and all prospered with them until their death. The Gold Children Thank you for listening to Storytime. You can always subscribe to the Storytime podcast, both on my social media at my buddy Jimmy, Facebook, and on Twitter. On my YouTube page, my buddy Jimmy101. You can also find the podcast and subscribe to downloads wherever you listen to podcasts. Spinal adjustments provided by Dr. Chad Rolfson. The Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center is a Des Moines area low flat fee per month unlimited chiropractic care practice. When life happens, just adjust. Schedule today at SpinalTuning.com.